basically I'm gonna run down each one of these so you'll know what they do and you can decide whether or not you want them on. So graphics quality, this one box at the top here that's by itself controls everything. So if I set this to ultra, you'll see that everything changes to ultra. So I don't really want to do that as if you're trying to get really good at this game or any FPS for that matter, you want to shoot for really high frames. So particle quality, particles are uh, they're, for example, when you're being shot at by a rifle and it hits the dirt in front of you, the stuff that gets kicked up, that's particles. So that's basically how good they look. Um, this can have a major impact on FPS. It won't right now because there's nothing happening. I'm just in the menu. But that one, generally, you want to keep the low. Same with texture quality. This one, you can see the effect, especially if you look at this little hat here. You'll see the difference there. Now, uh, shadow quality, these next three are really kind of one and the same. Shadow quality is just how, how good shadows look. You can see they, they don't look great lo right now. Looks like something out of Minecraft, kind of. But if I turn shadow resolution up, they'll look a lot better. And then uh, distance is just how far away those will render. Um, these will all have uh, in, an impact on your FPS. Um, now, animation quality does what it sounds like, affects how good the animations look. This one's kind of subjective. I don't, I don't really notice what it does, so I just keep it on low. Level of detail distance, I turn on to ultra. This just means that it's easier to see people far away. Um, and terrain quality, I play with that on low. I know some people, um, other really good players that I play with have that on ultra. It's, it's kind of subject, subjective. Some people complain that this turns off um, grass and trees and things like that. This one can affect your um, your frames pretty badly as well. Ambient quality, I play with that on ultra. The reasoning for that is that whenever uh, an enemy is shooting, if you have this on low, uh, their muzzle flash is going to be a lot less bright than if you had if this is on ultra. So it's easier to see people shooting at long range with this and water and mud quality does what it sounds like, I keep that on low. Down here you can see culling and deferred rendering. These are pretty technically complex mechanics and I'm not going to get into how they actually function and what they do. Just if your machine can handle it, have deferred rendering on, it draws kind of an outline around objects and it makes them pop out more. Um, and culling can also sometimes give you an FPS boost. So. Now, uh, field of view should always be set to 60. Um, it makes the uh, entire game narrower. Uh, there's less to see. Basically, it means that at longer ranges, you will be able to see people easier than if you have it set to 90. Um, don't play with any post effects on or anti-aliasing as you're shooting for high FPS. Um, and I always play with brightness on the max. Just makes it easier to see people on the darker maps, such as Champagne. So that's the basics for graphic settings. I play with four and uh, three. Four is the just when you're looking around, and three is when you're aimed down sights. Now I don't play with uh, any of this weird mouse settings here, but I do have toggle aim down sights off. So I have to hold right mouse button to aim down sights and this allows you to get in and out of uh, aiming down sights much quicker than if you have it as toggle. Um, some people play with manual bolting on, I don't, I think that's just a personal preference. So pretty standard stuff for movement, the only thing that's different is I have uh, crouch bound to my mouse. This allows for crouch shooting which I'll talk about in a uh, movement section later in this video. Uh, jump space. Uh, prone is left control. I really never use it, so it, this one doesn't really matter. Um, standard stuff, mouse one, or left mouse fire, right mouse aims down sight. R is reload. Melee is bound to my mouse. Um, uses B, you'll never really use that key. Squad voice chat, I don't have bound to anything, I never use it. This is all standard, I didn't change anything here. Um, gas masks should be something that you're able to get too quickly so 4 works pretty well for that. Q, 
um, that's good enough for your command interface. I use that as NCO, and uh, yeah, everything else is, I believe, default. So that's what I use for controls. Audio doesn't doesn't matter that much. I have everything turned down quite a lot. Music I turn down all the way as it gets distracting. Um, but yeah, there's really this is personal preference. So the first movement technique I want to teach you about today is called a jump shot. This is uh, best used with a rifle. Um, you can't do it really with any machine guns or pistols effectively. But basically what you do is you run and then jump and uh, aim down sights at the same time so that when you hit the peak of your jump you're already aiming down sights and you want to hold shift while in air so that your uh, your aim doesn't get thrown off so basically I'm gonna try and demonstrate it here for you just like that it's better when you do it off taller objects as you can see I can aim just fine and uh, this what this allows you to do is there's a lot of um, practical uses for this that you can find on your own but uh, say there's someone laying down around that corner there. instead of just walking around it or uh, aiming down sights and moving like this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come and run and jump so whoever's laying prone here or if they're in the back watching this area they're gonna be surprised by someone just coming flying across this corner here and because of the fact that I'm already aimed on sights and holding my breath, all I have to do is snap my aim to them and pull the trigger and I've killed them. So that's basically it for the jump shot. Um, it does take quite a bit of practice to get good with it, but uh, I'll just have a few examples in the next couple of seconds of um, me doing this in some public games so you can see how I use it and how it works. Take that. So that's what a jump shot looks like when it happens to you. And that's how to effectively use it. Um, obviously, I had almost no time to react to that. The next technique that I want to teach you about is called a crouch shot. Um, I'm going to teach it at the same time as I teach you how to strafe because it's you're never really going to use one or the other. Basically, all of these techniques, you want to combine them and use them together. And uh, what you do, say this tank here is a person, instead of just standing here like this, see, if I miss that first shot, it, I'm, a, I'm an easy target just standing here like this. He could pick me off, some guy over here could pick me off. You know, you're gonna get killed just standing in place. Um, good tip to keep in mind is always be moving. Anyway, so instead of just standing still when I'm shooting at this tank, I'm gonna crouch like this and be moving from side to side. Now, another thing I could do is jump shot like that, but crouch shooting like this It'll, it'll save you in some sticky situations because your character model ducks. I mean, you're basically ducking, so, you know, jump around this corner, crouch. And I do this all the time um, while, while jump shooting. Like, in midair, I'll crouch. Like, like that. So it sort of puts you on the ground faster and keeps you moving more, but... This is also a technique that takes a lot of practice, and as I mentioned earlier, I have my uh, crouch key bound to my mouse, 
I think that's the most effective way if you have a, that button to be able to crouch shoot. Now, another small tip in association with movement, you should always, 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 if you're aiming down sights with your rifle, be holding shift. No matter what you're doing, if you're just checking around a corner, you know, always hold shift. Take that extra second, you know, look at the wall and aim down sights and get, get your aim dialed in so when you come around the corner, you're ready to shoot. You don't want to walk around the corner like this and then aim down sights. You want to be ready and then move, or even better, jump shoot. So yeah, those are just some basic movement tips. Um, a lot of movement is pretty, you learn it as you play. One of the things that you always want to be conscious of is trying to have cover between you and the enemy. Um, that's one of the reasons that crouch shooting works so well, and I kind of forgot to mention it earlier, but whenever you crouch shoot, you always kind of want to have cover between you and the enemy. It doesn't work so well if you're just out in the open. But if I'm behind this rock, I'm ducking in and out here, he's going to have a really hard time hitting me, and I can pick him off just like that. So another uh, sort of minor technique that you can use, which uh, goes hand in hand with all of the other movement techniques that I've showed, is uh, the different ways you can peek. So peeking is pretty common in any FPS game, but basically what it is, is you're checking around a corner or um, looking out on an area or anything like that. So for example, uh, here on Vosges there's this kind of pile of uh, dirt and rubble here. Now instead of walking all the way around here to go see that this guy's here, what I can do instead is standing here, I'll just take a little hop, and I can see his hat. Just like that. So I can see that he's there. Um, you can also do this, uh, just kind of, say if he were out in no man's land, I can just kind of peek like this, jump up, see over the rock, or just kind of jump up on here and see these down there. And it's always better to check corners like this instead of just walking around them like this because you'll just get shot. So another mechanic in the game um, is what I call uh, jump mantling. It's kind of like that. Basically, uh, a lot of terrain you can actually climb up on top of or jump in the middle of. So you can see I just pulled shift and I run up this wall and I'm now stuck halfway up it, I can just hit space again, jump on top of it. This lets you run on the sides of the trenches. It's also pretty useful for just getting around. You can run on the walls, sides of the walls, stuff like that. Um, and as you can see here, if I want to, instead of just walking around this corner, if I want to jump up there and peek it, I'm going to jump here and then hit, just kind of spam space bar to get up on top of here. And I can do this pretty much anywhere. Um, anywhere there's a wall, you can basically just spam space to climb up it. Just to uh, add one more demonstration of how you can actually kind of mantle up on terrain to get to better spots. Um, right here there's this tree and this shovel. I can jump up between them and I can see um, this over here is where the Anthony will be spawning when they first uh, start the game. So you can uh, directly just defend this left side from this position and you're actually really hard to hit because you're between these two objects here.
So another thing that I want to mention real quickly that you should be doing is you don't always need to be in the trench. Of course, this is situational. You want to watch and see if the trench is being taken or not. But if you have plenty of people in, then what you probably want to be doing while you're on defense is coming back somewhere, like maybe right here to this rock, and just defending from here, or just being behind the lines. And um, the reason for this is that the enemy is more likely to put artillery on the trench than behind it. And you're also oftentimes in a better position to defend than... Right here you can see how much of our trench I can see and also how much of no man's land. From right here on the edge of this crater, I'm pretty open to any anyone coming from my left and from the right. So here you can see I'm attacking. Um, of course there's no one in this trench right now, but what I'm going to want to do is jump onto the sides and run along the sides like this. And the reason for this is that it's unexpected. People don't expect to see an enemy right here. And remember, you have eight seconds to be in the desertion time before you get killed. So that's plenty of time to run across here and do something like that, which they wouldn't be expecting. So it's during both defense and attack, you just want to be thinking about what the enemy expects you to do and do the opposite of that. So be in, be in strange places. Don't go where everyone else is going. You know, find your own spots. So the uh, HUD for front lines is pretty simple, as is the game mode. The objective is to just get in the enemy's trench, cap it, and then move on to the next trench. Uh, so the HUD really shows you, well, the information you need to know to be able to do that. So this big red circle that's in the middle of the screen shows that there's one person in this trench, which is me, and I'm holding it. And I'm holding it because I'm on defense. If I was the only person in this trench attacking, I would be taking it and this red circle here would be filling up. Now on the left there, you can see the mini map. That's pretty important. You should be checking that quite a bit. You can zoom in and out of that by pressing M. I believe there's three different zoom modes. You can see the amount of time left to defend underneath that little defend bar there. You can see the total game time at the top of the mini map. On the left and right, there's the total points for both sides. Um, you, as you can see, the circle is now filling up here as I'm capturing this trench. I have two minutes to attack. If I am still in this trench, after the two minutes ends, we get a foothold overtime, which means that if I die, we would then lose the trench and have to go back to ours. However, if you kill that little bar under there, zero out of 45, if you kill that uh, amount of people, or if your team does, that'll fill up, and that means that you're then you get more time. So. That's worth checking every now and then. Uh, the next wave bar is underneath there. Um, that just shows you the amount of time until the next spawn. And that's pretty much everything. Um, you can see your squad type, your abilities, whether or not to recharge, and your level above uh, where you'd be able to see your squad mates. And actually, on the bottom right, you can see your stance, and then you can see your sprint bar. Now you really want to be playing with rifles, and the reason for this is that with a rifle, uh, it's generally a one-shot kill, and you're able to outgun um, or get the drop on pretty much anybody. They're just they're the best guns in the game. You should be using rifles. You should always play with a rifle. Um, now there's three main rifles that are really. Uh, the best, um, and they're the ones that you should be using. And they for the uh, French squads, the Poilu or the Chasseur. You want to be using the Mosqueton uh, MLE 1892, the Berthier.
for the Tommies or uh, the Canadians, you want to use the um, SMLE. And then for the German squads, you want to use the uh, you want to use the Carabiner 98 AC. While every role in the squad has its own unique abilities and weapons, the most important role is the NCO. Now, it's always going to be the first slot in the squad screen here. You can see for the Lancer squad, it's called Unterofficier. And as the NCO, it's your responsibility to stay in cover so your teammates can spawn off of you, but also you have the added responsibility of calling in your squad's abilities. To do this you push Q and you can see that two th little uh, squares pop up. The one on the left is Command Aura and the one on the right is Mortar Shot. Now these are specific to the Lander squad. For other squads it's going to be different and I'm going to show you what all the different abilities are in a second. To call one of these in just left or right click and it will go where that uh, kind of cone and donut is in red. So I'm going to place my command aura right there. So you can see that now there's that move here uh, arrow and all of your squad mates are going to be able to see that.
don't put your mask on. Here it comes. <laughs> so now that I've shown you all the cool different abilities that the squads get, you're probably wondering, how do I unlock these? Well, it's a pretty simple process, but it's very time consuming. Uh, essentially, squad experience is based on the amount of games or the amount of squad XP you've uh, grinded for with friends. So the more games you've played with a friend, the higher your squad uh, experience is going to be. So uh, one thing that I want to demonstrate here, by myself, you can see that I don't have any squad XP. That's because there's no one else in the squad to contribute to the number. Now if I go ahead and get one of my friends in here, alright, so I now... When uh, Elock joins, you can see my squad level will go up. And now when Chirpy joins, you can see that the level stacks. So I have 45 games with Chirpy here and 28 with uh, Elock. So both of those numbers add together to contribute to the total squad XP. Alright, so thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you gained something from this video. Um, and if there's anything that you think that should be added or that I should cover in a later video go ahead and leave a comment um, and I plan on doing videos on the real world history as well as the in-game abilities and how to use them and stuff like that on each of the different squads which is why I didn't go super in-depth into them in this video so keep an eye out for those um, and I know there were some kind of slight audio issues in this but it's a mixture of two different microphones that I had while making this. So basically I got one and then I realized there was an issue with it and managed to, basically I fixed it, but uh, that's why the audio is so different and I apologize for that and there shouldn't be that issue in any of my future videos. So yeah, thanks again and I hope to see you on the killing fields.